Good morning. Good morning. I greet you all in Christian love and welcome everyone who's here and those that are online as well. <clears throat> if you would now um, look around you and greet uh, those in your vicinity with a little Christian love and pass the peace. Good morning. good morning again. Howdy, ma'am. Hey, Randy. Y'all back there. <laughs> good job. That was very pretty this morning. Let me see who's there. Yeah, I'll uh, hand back. I'll make sure. Oh, yeah. He finally let him know. Gotcha. That bone told. Thank you. Boy, <laughs> 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 this. 
this congregation takes the past and the peace seriously. They want to make sure they look all completely. It's hard to show them. Isn't it? It's kind of tender. It's going to be there. You know, I had the little discussion about should we do that, but I think it's best to have peace. I like seeing the hugs. That's pretty good passing. <coughs> if you would now, uh, stand and sing. <coughs> I don't know if I'll sing or not, but sing with me, Blessed Assurance, number 543. I think it's allergies. <clears throat> Announcements this week. Uh, Disciple Bell's rehearsal was this morning, or will be this morning at 11. Tuesday, the lunch bunch at Diamond Head number two. Wednesday, small groups. And the uh, choir rehearsal for Wednesday has been canceled. There'll be an elders meeting next Sunday. And under prayers and uh, concerns, Debbie Foster has been admitted to the ICU in Fayetteville. Having some breathing difficulties, please keep her and John in your prayers. A few other items, uh, a few housekeeping items, and then um, candidly, uh, something difficult. But first, the, the happy things, the housekeeping things. Uh, the first is that our children's building bathrooms, I understand, are back online. We now have the security door in place so that the children can be with the children and we can make use of those restrooms again, so that should be good to go. Uh, the second thing is that we are preparing for Commitment Sunday, and part of that means sending out pledge cards and uh, a letter 
And to that end, if we don't have your info yet, or if you suspect that we don't have your info, if you wouldn't mind filling out one of these, they can be found in the pews in front of uh, your, yours. That's gonna uh, help us just to send out the information to the right folks. Uh, additionally, if you check the box that says email me the church newsletter, we'll get you signed up for that. And that's really our way of communicating more of what's going on in the life of the church. Uh, to that end, the, the third thing of housekeeping is that we now have online giving. Uh, that's gonna be available in the newsletter uh, through the email. It's also available on our website. I know many of us use the traditional means, but if that's something that would work for you, uh, we got it. Now, as for the, the hard piece of news, um, Bradley Kidder Sr. has passed away this Friday. Uh, there were complications in his surgery, and he was unable to make it. Uh, we will be having the service here at the church on Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, this certainly is a time of mourning and a, a time of celebration in its own way. It's a celebration of his life. Uh, I don't want to, of course, stall the, the whole worship service. I know it's a shock to many of us. Um, but knowing Bradley Kidder Sr., I think an appropriate response would be to, to celebrate life and specifically to join together as the church and find ways to encourage one another. And so to that end, we will go ahead and move into the church rejoices in good news. Now, that was one of his favorite things is building folks up. And so what do we got? Birthdays, anniversaries, good news of all kinds. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Well, uh, Connor's been playing AAU basketball the last two weeks. And uh, yesterday he scored 20 points and a really nice win in Bentonville. And Post yeah. Really oh yeah. I just want to emphasize in that that's 20 points against Bentonville. I don't know if you've seen their schools, but you know. Yes, sir. Jordan made his all-star team. Amen. Amen. Wait, do we have one back here? Carl had his birthday yes. yesterday. Oh yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, excellent. Oh, yeah. So we got an, uh, an addition to the family through engagement. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, excellent. Oh, yeah. Now, real quick, does she have plans for college? Does she know where she's headed? All right. Well, let's see if she'll commute on Sundays, huh? Excellent. Thank you. Yes, sir. Excellent. Adria's birthday is tomorrow. Yes, sir. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Six foot two. <laughs> Nolan Parker Smith, a great grandson. Wonderful. Any others? Last call. Yes, ma'am. Linda's great granddaughter is in the building. So if you want to meet her, she's over in the nursery. All right, seeing no others, let's go ahead and stand and go to God with our call to worship. Our call to worship for this morning reads, We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We will not hold our light under a bushel. We will shine out for the world to see. Let's pray. Almighty, all-merciful God, 
Through Christ Jesus, you have taught us to love one another. Not just in word, not just in ideal, but to really love our neighbors as ourselves. And even to, to love our enemies, those who persecute us. So we ask today that you would supplicate us, that you would grant your loving resolve to us. God, in times of violence and fear, times when rumors of both civil war and World War III have spread far and wide, God, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts and in this sanctuary so that we would not be overcome with evil, but we would overcome evil with good. God, help us not to see through party lines or through agendas, but have us see each person in light of the love and the grace that you have shown us in Christ. God, as we reflect in this in this post-Easter season on the mystery and miracle of the resurrection, we ask that you would awaken within us the, the dawning of your new creation, that you would include us in the work of making all things new. Establish amongst us here at this church and out to the ends of the earth a future where peace reigns, where justice is done with mercy, where all are given the chance for reconciliation. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, Today's scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. It's page 991 in the Pew Bible if you want to follow along. Beloved, let us want, love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. Jesus, 
I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily Also, for the next couple of weeks, our stewardship ministry has asked me to, to speak on some of the big focuses for this next year. Uh, we're calling this series, This Is Us, and what you'll notice as we go through it is that we aren't making any radical changes. We aren't uh, really doing anything too crazy, but 
in this next year, we are starting to uh, intentionally focus in on a few things as a church. And so that's what we're going to be looking at the next couple of weeks. And so to start out, uh, I do want to tell you that I'm kind of a stickler about what ministries call themselves. You know, things like Cairo, Mission Possible, CYF, things like that. You know, it's not a hill I'm dying on, but you know, if you ask my opinion, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, see, my opinion is that all ministries should be named like they name things at Aldi's. You know, at Aldi's, you can't find Doritos, but I know you can find flavored corn chips. You know, at Aldi's, you don't find any Oreos, but I can guarantee you can find uh, cream sandwich cookies, can't you? That's, what, that's how I think ministry should be named. You know, not CYF or Cairo, just youth group, things like that. Just makes things a little bit simpler for guests. But, uh, but with that, would you believe that, that those aren't the worst names by any stretch that I've seen for ministries? So I've seen some, some bad ones, y'all. I was at a church. This is 100% true. I was at a church. They let the kids name their own children's ministry. And so they ended up calling the, the children's ministry Kids for Christ. And I know that doesn't sound that bad, but you have to consider that they started abbreviating it. So Kids for Christ became KFC. Yeah. You'll understand. You'll understand then why I was the only person over 10 years of age to show up to KFC in finger painting. I thought it was a really innovative ministry. All right, one more. This is, again, and this is a 100% real-world example that I have seen at a church that I have served at. Another church I was at, they had a men's group. You know what this men's group called themselves? The Gracists. The Gracists. They didn't see a single thing wrong with that. In fact, no one even batted an eye whenever one of the bulletins one Sunday read, we need folks to help set up the fellowship hall for a gracist meeting. We just went along with that one. And it was one of the bigger ministries of the church, so, you know, I wasn't saying anything. I was just praying a lot. <laughs> the church, by far, the worst thing you could do, the worst thing you could do if you were going to name a ministry is name it after some pop culture phenomenon that's going to be tired in like two years' time. You know, if we did that whenever I first came here, we might well have named uh, a group the Let It Go group. You remember that song? It's already a tired reference, isn't it? Imagine if I came to you all and say, 1996. If I came to you all in 1996, we may well have uh, done a different name for a ministry. In fact, guess what name, guess what name was going throughout the entire nation in the summer of 1996? I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Mission Impossible had just come out. Guess what name every church was going with? Mission, oh yeah. Oh, and like I said, I'm not changing it. It's not a hill I'm dying on. I'm just letting y'all know. The thing is, most churches, you gotta understand, most churches, they took a name like that and they, they retired it after like two or three years because the reference got dated. There were already like five sequels to Mission Possible at that point too. But we, we stuck with it. And as I think about it, I, I figure we stuck with it because that's where the heart and, our, and the soul of our church is at, isn't it? Mission Possible, that wasn't just a, a reference. That was, that was a beloved name. That's what we have pictures of downstairs. And that's what we love to do. We truly, as a church, we see that we can make a difference, that God has a mission. It is, in fact, possible here. And I love that. I really do, but... It puts me in a bind because now what I have to propose to you all is something that I can only call Mission Possible too. See, you'll recall that uh, we had to shut down a lot of things for COVID, and we put in a few patches as they were coming back online, and it really wasn't until last summer that the COVID committee cleared us to, to mostly go back to normal. Of course, COVID is going to COVID, and if anything goes down, our first priority is everybody's safety. but we got the sense about last summer that we could really start reopening and restarting a few things. So you'll recall that one of the first things we did at that point was that we uh, got together the Mission Possible room. 
uh, where Elizabeth Vaughn has been doing so much work to uh, help folks out in their time of need. And I'll let her share on that whenever she's ready to, but I, I do want it to communicate to us that that room is, is changing lives. That room, people are going there in their most critical time of need, and they're being shown, not just told, they are being shown the merciful love of Jesus Christ. They're being connected with the community, they're being given resources. It is a great mission. Similarly, this last year, we noticed that uh, in our natural disaster responses, uh, we needed to close the gap between our church, Week of Compassion through the denomination, and Cure with John Mundy. And so that's going to be one of the things we're working on is really just tightening up that relationship to make sure that whenever a disaster happens, we strike back hard and fast. But as we continue to develop the box office hit that we can only call Mission Possible 2. We can drop the two if we want. I'm just, you know. And those are going to be staples for us. Uh, but at this time, I want us to see the opportunity that we now have, church. As we anticipate this new church year, I want to make us all aware that we are very lay-led as a church. And so in a couple of weeks, we should anticipate that there will be sign-ups for different ministries. And I want us to understand that Community outreach is wide open. It is something that, that we need some good folks for. We need folks to be run with it. See, what I'm seeing and uh, what I suspect you all are itching to do as we get out of COVID even further is that we can make room to bring back mission trips. We ought to be taking some time to, to really be focusing on how we love people, how we show up for people, how we go get on our mission. And so we will be building that up. Uh, I don't want to prescribe every last detail in there. Missions, it's really something that needs to come from the heart of the whole church, not just from the minister. But I want us to be aware that community outreach is going to be a big focus for us in the future. What I would love to see more than anything, if I could write a, a Christmas letter to Santa, what I'd put on it is, for the next 10 years, let's put a lot of effort into community outreach every year finding a way that we could do local missions, that we could build up a room or have a team getting after something, just whatever fits us, making that our main thing. And so with that being something on the horizon for us, like I said, I, I don't want to prescribe every detail because all of us together is smarter than just one of us, but I do want to briefly touch on how I anticipate that affecting folks uh, with the missions. See, because community outreach, missions, things like that, we know, of course, that it, it serves the people it serves. It affects the people who are affected by it. That's kind of self-evident. But it also does a great job of affecting two more camps. And I want us to uh, briefly touch on that. Those two camps that we're going to be looking at are us and the people we're trying to reach. See, as we consider uh, how we're reaching the next generation, and we're going to be looking more at that next week, but what the reports are saying uh, may be somewhat surprising to us. By the way, I'm of, of that next generation age, and anecdotally I've confirmed it, but I got the report, so I feel good about it. But what we're seeing is that a lot of the common tropes that, that you'd expect aren't exactly true. Uh, a lot of the common tropes, getting great at social media, tends to be what folks think churches need to do. Uh, having a hiking group or a beer drinking group or some, something like that seems to be what a lot of folks assume churches need to do. Getting edgy from the pulpit or endorsing a political party, that's yet another thing. You see, there's a lot of things that we sort of can assume will attract the next generation, but the truth is, is those are mostly things that older folks are telling younger folks they want. It's not actually what the younger folks are wanting. And so as we look to the reports, what we see what young folks are looking for, we have to consider that they're not actually all that different from older folks. Mostly what's reported is that young folks who would go to a church, they just want a good church. You know, uh, there's some specifics, don't be super judgmental, don't be anti-gay, don't be politicking, a lot of the reasons why I'm sure many of us ended up here in the first place. But really, more than anything, uh, what young folks 
who would consider going to a church you're looking for is simply a good church. Specifically, it's, it's asked for that churches would talk the talk and walk the walk. Right, see, let me relate this back to our scripture reading and then we'll pull back out again. You'll notice 1 John, it gives a beautiful portrait of the Christian faith and in it, it says no one has seen God. But the proof, the proof that we know God is in our ability to love others well. And you'll notice further, it defines that love through the person and the work of Jesus Christ. So what's that mean? Well, it means that it's an incarnational love. It's not a, a fuzzy feeling. It's not a nice idea. It's something that you bake into the earth itself. It's that kind of love. It's costly. It's renouncing your own authority to get in the trenches with us as Christ himself did. It's a love that, that submits itself, that's costly, that'll go to the cross, that'll show up for things. That kind of love. That's what's being asked for is Simply a church that, as much as they talk about the gospel, that they would show the gospel, you see. And so that's what young folks seem to be looking for. It's actually extremely biblical. It's not some wild idea. It's not going viral on TikTok or reinventing what church even is. It's really just a, a church and a, a community that walks the walk just as much as it talks the talk. And so how developing and redeveloping local missions is going to affect those that we're trying to reach is it's, it's going to do something of uh, kind of proving who we are, that we are who we say we are. Now, on the other end of things, our priority to redevelop local missions, I want us to understand that's going to affect us too. Uh, primarily, what that does is it redevelops our sense of we. A church... It, a church always has to have a good sense of we. Right? What do we do here? What do we believe? Things like that. You know, in the Disciples of Christ, we, we have a, a good amount of flexibility. We have a good amount of openness to different perspectives. But we still have a we, don't we? You know, and so I, I believe that it's, it's going to be really good for us to redevelop and to, to strengthen as we come out of COVID our ability to say, hey, we're missional. Hey, we love to serve folks. We love to just love and then, and then get on with our days. People want to be part of a, a strong understanding of we, especially when we are walking the walk, you see. See, what we're seeing is, uh, is the uh, missional church model. The way that works is not that people saw you wearing a church t-shirt while you were serving folks and they trace down where that t-shirt came from and show up. Now, I got nothing against church t-shirts, but that's just not how that works. Similarly, it's, uh, it's not that we took pictures of the work we did and posted it on a line and everybody got really jealous and started coming down. The missional model, it, it doesn't tend to work because we served somebody and now they feel obliged to show up. That can happen. Folks who've been served can show up and that's always a joy. But what really happens, how, how this model that we've been working on and getting the pieces in place for and sort of working out the details before we could enact it on this side of COVID. How the missional church model works is it, it, it makes us proud of something. It makes us proud of our we. You get to say, hey, we're doing a, a really cool local mission. I want you to be involved. It's where we naturally have that sort of bounce in our step, where we want to invite a friend. We want to, hey, you got to see what we're doing here. That sort of thing. Not only that, but, but as our last thing today, I want us to understand that the missional church is, is biblical. It fits the model of what we should be doing. It's theologically rich. It's, it's what I believe the uh, Christian faith lends itself to, incarnational love, that we are pouring out the love of God into others. And so as our last thing today, uh, I want to just tell you why I'm excited about heading in this direction and, and finally getting to finally getting to be within six feet of each other and all that sort of thing to where we can do it. Being missional, it, it means being missional, right? It means incarnating the love of Christ, whatever that specifically looks like in the moment. But it also means that on our good days and on our bad days, we get to be the same people. It means that if we look up one morning and there's two people in worship, or if we look up and there's a packed house, we got the same role. We get to be missional. 
We get to serve others. We get to love others well. We get to prioritize the next person well. I want us to have that kind of outcome independence, that we, we don't fret over every bump along the road, but we can look out and we can see that there is a mission, that God is doing things here in Fort Smith and it involves us. And so bottom line, what the missional church model is, what we're going to be building up and intentionally looking at throughout this next year and hopefully throughout the next 10 years or, dare I say, 100 years, what it is, it, is it's really just permission to do the things that God has put on the heart of so many of us already, to serve our neighbors, to love folks well, that sort of thing. We already love that. It's already what we take pictures of and hang up in the hallway. So to close, I just want us to know that, that there's room to do what we love to do. There's room to be what we love to be. That's actually the, the primary thing. God's already put the call on us well before I got here, and now that we're out of COVID, and now that we have a couple of the pieces back in place, let's make Mission Possible 2 happen. And even drop the 2 from the name. This isn't a sermon, but I was up at three o'clock this morning and having, was doing some musing. <laughs> so I noted a few things. 3 a.m. musings of an old man, if you will. <clears throat> In the mornings, every morning I end up uh, early out walking, mostly because of my dogs. They won't tolerate me laying in bed. <clears throat> But at any rate, when, uh, when we go out, I'm usually wearing a loose pair of shoes, and we walk down the driveway, which is uh, full of gravel and stones, probably easily more than a million small stones. And it seems like pretty regularly, one of them somehow or another gets in my shoe. And when it first gets in my shoe along the side, you know, it's not a big deal. I, can, I know it's there, but it's not a, it doesn't bother me. But after a few more steps, then it starts to bother me. And then not very long, <clears throat> long down the hill, it's a major problem. On the ball of my foot, it's, a, it's something I have to deal with. And you know, some mornings I stop right away and I take my shoe off and I knock it out and I go on and I continue to enjoy God's creation, which where I live is birds singing and the sunrise and dew in the grass, and it's beautiful. Of course, if I don't stop and take that stone out, then I'm focused on that pain and not enjoying God's creation. I say that to say this. <laughs> the world is full of words. 
And depending on how we use them, sometimes we offend others. Sometimes we get offended. If I've offended you, please forgive me. But much like that stone, if we don't stop and knock that out of our shoe, pretty soon it becomes something that absolutely prevents us from glorifying God as we should, as he wants us to, as we want to. So I'm suggesting this morning as we come to the table, if you need to, knock that stone out of your shoe so we can all glorify God together as he wants. <clears throat> as you come to the table, please come up the outside aisles, and when you return, go back down the middle, please. Well said. We recall at this table the night Jesus was being betrayed. For it was on that night that he took a loaf of bread, lifted it up, gave thanks for it, blessed it, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Take of it, all of you, eat of it, and do so in remembrance of me. In a similar way, he took the cup after supper. Lifting it up, he gave thanks for it. He blessed it, and he said, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, for the, for the forgiveness of sin of many people. Take of it, all of you, drink of it, and do so in remembrance of me. Let us come forward.
If you would pray with me. Our Father, we thank thee now for this opportunity we've had to remember our Lord in the manner which he has requested. We thank thee for all thy wondrous blessings upon us and the opportunity to return some portion of them to thee that you might make use of them to further thy kingdom here on earth. We thank thee now for all and ask all in the name of our Lord, Jesus the Christ. At this time, if there are any who feel called to join First Christian Church in membership, uh, please do come forward. You can also find more information in the narthex or by reaching out throughout the week to the church office. But with that said, receive now this benediction. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.